In this film series, we look into five Celtic port towns that are connected and intertwined by the ferry routes that serve them. To get to know the landscape and the history, we hear from the people in the know. We meet up with six local characters. Social historian Madeline, maritime historian Leo, scout leader Adrian, folk musician Brendan, horse rider Sabrina, and local surfer Jack. We hear of their passion for heritage and how their love of the place they call home is shaping the future. Welcome to Ports, Past and Present, Ross Lair Harbour. I think anyone who lives by the sea, it's almost in your DNA. You just love the place. I'm, I'm always fascinated by the fact that we all have this kind of sense of belonging in whatever little tiny part of the world we live in. There's nowhere like home. Remembering back in, in kind of the history of, of Rassler Harbour, there was very little activity here. I think it was 1846, there would have been a lot of talk about the suitability of Rosslare Harbour as a port. It was the best part of 50 years before it was officially opened as a, a port and a railway. We're very fortunate geographically, the location of Rosslare Harbour was just right for the development of a big port. I was born and bred in Rosslare Harbour. My memories are all about the pier and the ships and the fishing boats and the people who worked on the pier. My father was uh, worked all his life on the pier for uh, British Rail. The original entrance um, to the harbour was by a viaduct and it had two railway lines in the middle, a pedestrian walkway on the right, a cattle grid on the left, which um, the cattle were assembled down here and they used to go out along the walk, cattle walk and under, underneath the harbour there was um, a cattle creep they called it and straight onto the ships for export. The inhabitants of Rosslea Harbour are proud, resilient and very friendly and their place, place in Irish history is a very proud people. They've come through tough times up to the 50s and 60s and they've come through that and then they've had recessions like everybody else and they've worked their way through that as well. The spirit of volunteerism is amazing and when you walk around here we have our memorial park, we have lovely trails along the top of the bank. These are all the result of community getting together. Well, this is Kerwin's Gardens, and um, about 30 years ago, his garden just backed onto this particular area here that I'm standing in. And he just started pottering away and um, took an interest in trying to sort it out. And over the last 30 years, it has just developed. And um, I'd say about 15 years ago, the local environment group um, became interested and they have a band of people now who work here probably on a daily basis and have developed the paths and introduced new shrubs and flowers. And now it has been transformed into really what has become a tourism attraction for Rossler Harbour. I'm from Wexford. I am Wexford born and bred. Um, I know this area very well. I grew up here. Here in Wexford, like we have a track record of uh, welcoming people into our community, but particularly Rosslare, like Rosslare, not just because of the port, um, but because of the history of the place. Diversity is something that we grow up with here in Wexford. You're sitting in um, an ancient barony called Forth, and there's another barony right next to us called Bargy. And Forth and Bargy were the, um, the Wexford Pale. So when the Normans came in 1169, the, the area was settled. So we've had, from that time, we've had Flemish, Old English, Welsh, uh, French, Dutch and Frisian all lived in this area here as well. So these two barneys, which is around the Rosslare area, has always been, through history, been a very diverse culture. In the last eight century, when the whole island of Ireland has become quite diverse and it's absolutely brilliant, it's brought so much to, to our country. 
no matter what part of Ireland you go to, uh, people will talk about their own microclimate. But I think we have a bit more science on our side down here in Ross Lair. We tend to have a different weather pattern than uh, even the, the greater Wexford area. And it's, it's not strange to be sitting in this park here and watch rain just, just, just miss us, just go by, you know, and not arrive here. Where we are here now in Kirkloa, we're right almost at the southern tip of Ireland, so it's just kind of nestled in behind Rosslare. But I think the river and the fact that, um, that we're right down just that little bit more south in Ireland creates that kind of a little bit of a microclimate. When we do get surf, it really has to kind of come up, it has to be quite strong from the south. So what we're really looking for is storms that hit France and will drive a bit of swell right up from the south. You're kind of working towards something always with surfing, so you're always getting better and you can always challenge yourself just doing something for the sake of doing it right now and enjoying it right now. And they're the reasons that, that I like going into the water anyway. So when I'm out in the water, like definitely one of the, the most uh, common, I suppose, little friends that you'll have out there would be the, the seals coming up to you and like they'll come, they're really curious, especially if there's a bit of swell in the water and it'll churn up the kind of silt uh, from the river and the water might be a bit murky and they know you're there but they don't know how far away you are and they'll come up right beside you and they just want to see who, because you look like a seal as well with your hood up and uh, in, in, the, in the wetsuit as well, you know, you look like a little seal so they don't, they're kind of like, what are you, what are you doing and what are you doing here? <laughs> When I came down here, I just fell in love with the beach. It's on lots of people's bucket lists to be able to ride a horse on the beach. There's just something really magic about that. I don't know where, where it has come from, but I've always loved horses, every aspect of them. I suppose I've worked with show jumpers. I've been, been involved in racing a little bit. To me, it doesn't really matter. I just love the horses. I'm not sure what it is, but Irish people certain, seem to have a really good relationship with young horses, producing horses. It seems to be a very natural thing here in Ireland. It's really, really super here to have the coastline because it's fabulous for the horses' mentalities. I think probably being so close to the port it obviously brings a lot of people from England and from Wales. It's very accessible to come over here for short trips. And we get quite a lot of people coming, you know, with family. And they can come and stay for a couple of days. It's not a big journey across. But you're still going to another country, you know. So the port makes it very accessible for those kind of visitors coming in here. Because of the port, you get a, a lot of people traveling to and from the port and because I play music, it's, it's extra special because a lot of people are coming in and they listen to the music and we're in the pub and, and play a few tunes. Playing sessions like we're sat down in a, in a chair, like and you're not on stage, you're not mic'd up. The visitors love that. They've never seen this type of thing and it is lively. It's a whole culture, it's a whole way of life and it's fantastic. It's to do with my own feeling about the pipes. I just have a passion for that sound. And also, County Wexford would be the home of Illin Pipe, and really, this is where it kind of all started, going way back with some of the traveler, traveling men. They were pipers. We went from the 80s up to the 90s, and you had river dance, which was a great revival of Irish music but in a different sort of a sense. It took on a new uh, format and it was mixing with other, other types of music, which I think helps it to keep alive. Like we are the first port to call for Europe onto our island. So we're the first Irish people that as so many other countries visit, like you can come directly into Ross Airport now from so many different parts of the continent as well as the UK. We're the first Irish people people see. We're also the last if they're going home that way too. One of the things that really strikes me about a place like this is the family connection and the way that families have stayed here in Rosslare Harbour. 
fourth generation now and people don't move away. We're only caretakers, you know, we're only here to, to look after our land for the next generation. And I think that's so true here. I think people have a real respect for Rosslare Harbour and its environment.